It is possible to contract a brain-eating amoeba from your neti pot, even contract it from swimming in warm fresh water like lakes, hot springs, and poorly chlorinated pools. This brain-eating amoeba is called Negleria fowleri, so let's break it down and explain how you can potentially contract this deadly amoeba. Yesterday, I presented the case of a 12-year-old boy who went with his cousins on the 4th of July to go swimming in the lake. On the third day after swimming, he began to complain of a frontal headache and his parents treated him with ibuprofen because they just thought he had a summer virus. But on day five, he began to develop a high fever and became more confused. They took him to the emergency room where a CT scan of his brain showed diffuse cerebral edema. And at the time, the doctor did not know what they were dealing with. They thought it was meningitis, but the cultures came back negative. So what was attacking his brain? It was Negleria fowleri, a brain-eating amoeba. It lives in warm freshwater like lakes, hot springs, and poorly chlorinated pools, and even in properly used neti pots. So let me explain how this can possibly happen. What you need to look for and avoid to protect yourself from potentially developing this life-threatening infection. You see, the infection occurs when contaminated water enters through the nose, often during swimming, diving, or, or using neti pots that don't have sterile water. It doesn't cause infection if you swallow it, it's only if it enters through your nose. Once the infected water enters through the nasal cavity, the amoeba can attach to the olfactory epithelium, which is the lining of your nasal cavity, and then it can penetrate through something called the cribiform plate. It's actually a part of your skull with little holes in it that allows the olfactory nerves, the nerves responsible for the sense of smell, from your brain into your nasal cavity. So the amoeba can actually track through that olfactory bulb to enter your brain. Once it's inside of the brain, it can rapidly replicate and migrate all through your neural tissue. And that triggers a robust inflammatory response. It can cause necrosis of the brain, diffuse cerebral edema like seen in our patient's CAT scan, even hemorrhage and massive neutrophilic infiltrate of the spinal fluid. The amoeba actually secretes a cytolytic enzyme that destroys your brain tissue. This leads to a rapidly progressive primary amoebic meningioencephalitis, or known as PAM. And this is a rapidly progressive fatal brain infection. Symptoms often start within one to nine days of exposure and usually begin with a frontal headache, then followed by fever, nausea and vomiting. That's because of increased cerebral pressure, stiff neck, confusion, seizures, and even coma. What's happening is that your immune system is going into overdrive, trying to get rid of this amoeba in your brain. And most patients simply do not survive beyond seven days of symptom onset. It's 97% fatal and there's only a handful of survivors worldwide. You see, it mimics bacterial meningitis, which is way more common. The fevers, confusion, headaches, elevated white blood cell count in the spinal fluid, we're often waiting for the cultures to become positive from the spinal fluid, and it can get treated wrong for many days before it's too late. Diagnosis means that you have to find the amoeba in the CSF, but these tests are really rare, slow, and not always conclusive. There's no rapid test, and that's what makes it so dangerous. By the time you know, it's often too late and the brain damage is irreversible. Because it does progress so rapidly, it's really important to start treatment if you even suspect that this is occurring. And typically a combination of a few medications are used. Amphotericin B and other antifungal medicines like fluconazole and even some other antibiotics and steroids can be used, but that a new antiparasitic drug called metilfacine is a promising upcoming treatment and has been used in some survivors. And of course, there's ongoing research to help develop better treatments. Because it is so dangerous, the best treatment is prevention. Nigleria fowleri is found worldwide, and it thrives in warm freshwater environments, especially those in hot climate. So geographically speaking, it's more common in the Southeast United States, particularly Florida, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Nevada are where cases have been identified. And tap water that has been identified in cases of neti pot usage has been seen in Texas, Louisiana, and Arizona. 
Globally, there are other regions where it's been identified like India, Pakistan, Australia, Costa Rica, Mexico, Thailand, Iran, the Czech Republic, New Zealand, and even Africa. So safety-wise, we can't prevent the amoeba from living in these lakes, but we can stop it from entering our brain. Remember, you cannot get it from drinking the water only when water is forced up your nose. Like if you're jumping into bodies of water, diving, dunking somebody, or forcefully placing water up your nose through a neti pot. Avoid warm, still bodies of fresh water in the summertime. You know, like that completely still part of the lake that nobody goes in or that nasty looking pool that hasn't been clean in months. Don't go there and use nose clips or hold your nose if you're jumping into water. And never ever use tap water in your neti pot. Use only sterile, distilled, or even boiled water. The patient that I presented at the beginning of the video didn't make it like most patients that are diagnosed with this infection. And I share the story in hopes of saving a life. Know the signs, protect your kids, and share this video to raise awareness. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.